there's so many things from negotiating your pay, negotiating your salaries that black engineers and just you know minorities in, in this industry are so afraid to do because we feel like we shouldn't be there in the first place. And I think breaking that mindset is the most important thing. Understanding that you aren't here by chance, you know, you're not lucky to be in the position that you are. You deserve to be there because you've worked for it and you're great at your job. Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of the Dev Story series. Today we're going to be meeting with Victor who went from a 2.8 GPA in college all the way to getting a job at Netflix. Hope you enjoy this video. If you wanna see more videos in this series, make sure to tap that like button, smash that subscribe button, and leave a nice comment to show this channel some love. And I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Victor Anira. I am a senior software engineer at Netflix, angel investor, entrepreneur, and also a content creator by the name of The Cinematic Engineer. Growing up, I had pretty much no interest or even knowledge about tech. I had three options. I either had to be an engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer, and I opted to be a, a doctor. So I grew up studying and thinking I would go into medicine. I even remember walking around with like an MCAT book in high school because I was so convinced that was my future. As a kid, I was in love with video games. I remember getting the PS1 back in Nigeria, and we played it all night. I remember waking up the next day still tired and still wanting to play the game. I really wasn't coding or anything. I just really grew up enjoying video games. I enjoyed using the computer, watching YouTube videos and other, you know, just things related to the internet at a young age. But I never really got exposure to the side of building things. My college experience was very unique in the sense that I started college at the age of like 16. I went to a collegiate high school where for my last two years of high school, I basically also took college classes on a college campus. So this allowed me to graduate with both my high school diploma as well as my associate's degree in science. When I actually went to like a full-on four-year university, I came in with this sort of notion that I was gonna go into the medical field. While I was there, I quickly realized that, you know, my classes just didn't inspire me to wanna learn. I was going through them and just going through the motions, and it wasn't until I watched a movie, I think it was called The Social Network, that was about Facebook's uprising and whatnot, that I really started to think about, you know, what kind of future do I wanna have for myself? And at that point, I had this idea that was always in the back of my head. It was called this Concussion Preventing Helmet Assistant. That was actually inspired by Iron Man and the Jarvis helmet system. And so I was like, how do I build this? And so I started to teach myself how to code while still being pre-med major. I remember reaching out to every single professor at the university in the engineering department, asking them, hey, I have this idea I wanna to bring to life. Can I please use your lab? Because, you know, I needed to solder things. I needed like electronic gadgets and things like that. And I just didn't have access to those things. And only one professor responded back to me. He said, hey, come in, let's talk. And so I went, I met him. He sat me down and said, you know what? I like the idea, but I don't think you're ready to work on things by yourself. So you can come into my lab with my fellow graduate students and you can work on it there. And so I was able to do that and those couple of months were really intensive, but I was able to learn about Arduino Unos and microprocessors and I was able to finally build this helmet with a programmed voice. That project actually ended up leading me to an undergraduate research award. That was the moment where I was like, you know what, I need to switch over to this thing because I just have a passion for it and I really loved the entire learning experience building it. When I switched majors, it was not a fun time in my family. I grew up in a family of four. So I had two brothers and one sister and then my mom. And so my mom grew up as a single mother. So we grew up really in poverty. I wouldn't say extreme poverty, but definitely money was an issue growing up. She saw me and my oldest brother as like, you know, a way to kind of escape that and really kind of move towards wealth. And being a doctor was kind of the, the central part of that. My oldest brother actually is now a doctor, but at the time he was still kind of applying for medical school. And when I told him the news that I was moving away from the medical field because my mom's a nurse, my sister's a nurse, my brother's a doctor. So I come from a very medical heavy background. They were very disappointed. Uh, they were like, what is this computer science thing? Are you sure it's gonna lead to a promising future, a promising career? But at that point, I just knew that, you know, even if I couldn't follow up with like a good paying job, I knew that it allowed me to bring things from my mind into the world, right? It was a sort of a, a way to create things that didn't exist. And that was something I would do no matter what. Making the switch to computer science had a really profound impact on me, you know, because in the pre-med world, your GPA is kind of like one of the most important things out there. And when I made the switch, I was a little bit behind, right? I was already a sophomore at this point in time and I only had two years left. And so I kind of had to make a decision because I knew about the industry and I knew that internships were really an important signal for full-time opportunities when you graduated. And just the workload was really heavy because again, I was catching up and I was taking, you know, a lot of credit hours every single semester. And so I kind of made the choice to say, you know what? The GPA isn't 
the most important thing for me to focus on right now, right? I wanted to kind of embed myself in this field as much as possible, learning, building things, and just getting real world experience and applying it so that I could kind of have knowledge that I could really use in my internships and, you know, in the long term. I also really came into the field because I wanted to build things. I had ideas, apps, social networks that I wanted to build, uh, and that to me was a driving force. So sacrificing those visions to just get a high GPA, which I was starting to understand wasn't as important in the software engineering field, just didn't make sense to me. So I decided, I was going to do the bare minimum for my classes and every moment outside of that, I was going to focus on building things. I was going to focus on learning real world use cases and real world applications of the software I was learning in my classes. I ended up getting a job as a computer assistant and that was, that was arguably one of the best decisions I made in my entire college experience. So in the mornings I'd go to class, go to my courses, and then right after I would go to work. So basically I'd be sitting in a computer and my job was basically to assist students if they ever had any issues. And most students just didn't really have that many issues in a given day. And so I was on my computer and I could literally do all my homework. So I would do all my homework. And then once that was done, I would just open up my personal laptop and just start working on the things I was building, social networks, and also just learning new technologies. You know, my days were pretty busy for from just working and then homework and then you know learning and building but I think it just taught me how to be very conscious of time and time management in general I was able to build a fully featured social network I was able to learn like five new languages you know multiple technologies multiple new domains in computer science I ended up learning iOS programming and building an iOS app because I wanted to build a social network app I learned backend engineering because I wanted to build a social app and you kind of need to know those things to build that and that actually ended up helping me get my first internship the following summer as the iOS developer at a company in Austin, Texas. I had two internships under my belt. One was at a smaller company, the other one was at a much bigger company called Pandora. And so when I was interviewing, I interviewed with pretty much every company you could think of. And as I look back at that experience, a couple of things stand out to me. The first one is I wish I had studied differently because I focused really, and I think a lot of people make this mistake, where they focus on memorization. You try to, you go on LeetCode, you try to memorize a couple of questions, and you kind of hope that you'll get asked those same types of questions in your interview. In my experience, isn't really the best way of go about it because a small tweak in the actual question itself and how it's asked can end up completely throwing you off and, and you can end up missing a, a question that might have been easily solved. And as somebody who has now interviewed hundreds of people, I see it all the time where people will learn a particular variant of a question and when I change one aspect of it, they're unable to kind of understand and kind of logically follow it. My tip would be to learn how to read and sort of think about these questions, right? In, in the field of computer science, we're very lucky in the sense that there is really a limited number of questions that can be asked, right? You can ask a question about strings, arrays, graphs, and once you understand at a deep level how to think about these questions and how to manipulate these data structures, there's really only a limited pool of questions that people can ask from. There's some questions that are kind of gotcha questions that you kind of have to know some mathematical formula to solve, but those are pretty rare. So I think looking back, I wish I had focused on that, actually just digesting what data structures and algorithms do, the certain types of questions that are asked in these interviews, and really understanding at a much deeper level would have probably you know, helped me get more offers than I ended up getting. But when I did get my first offer, it was definitely a moment of just jubilation, right? Like going through this five, six year journey in a way, it just felt amazing to finally get that final piece of paper or you know, DocuSign email that had this number on it. And then that number to me was life changing because that was more than anyone I had ever known had made <laughs> in, in their lives. And from that point forward, it just kind of you know, let me know that I belonged in this field and I was actually capable of excelling and succeeding in this industry. Getting to Netflix was a really interesting journey because Netflix has a mystique to it, right? There's sort of this idea that it's a very cutthroat place, only senior engineers, all-star team, and if you're not all-star, you get cut. It's kind of a scary place um, for a lot of new grads or just people who are kind of starting in their career. And I was actually reached out to twice from, from people in Netflix. One, when I was at my previous company and when I left. And so when I thought about it, I still had that fear, you know, coming into this company that's known for being really high caliber and being very clear about if someone is a meet their caliber and that person, you know, being let go and whatnot. And so when I came in, I came in with a lot more confidence. I think working at the startup really showed me that, hey, I can do this, right? It isn't just, oh, I have a mentor and he walks me through everything. It's like, no, when I am on my own, when I have to figure it out at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I can actually do this. That startup experience helped me go from joining as a new grad engineer or like a very low level engineer and working my way up to a tech lead. And so I developed a lot more confidence in myself. And so when a manager reached out, I said, you know what? Let's see what all the hype is about. Working in Netflix now, I really enjoy just the maturity of this company. I really enjoy how open things are and just the feedback culture is something not only have I taken and applied to myself, but I also apply now in multiple aspects of my life, my relationships, it's also my friendships with others. Being a black developer, 
is a really interesting space because you're usually gonna find that you're one of the only engineers in your department or maybe even, even in, in your entire company. And I think that there's definitely bias when people sometimes work with me, not necessarily in my current company or any of my previous companies. There's times where you do feel like you're an outsider or times where you feel like you know, you're not part of the team because of things that sometimes are out of your control. I think my advice is to focus and really build up your confidence, right? There, there's so many things from negotiating your pay, negotiating your salaries. There's so many things that black engineers and just you know minorities in, in this industry are so afraid to do because we feel like we shouldn't be there in the first place. And I think sort of breaking that mindset is the most important thing, right? Understanding that you aren't here by chance, you know, you're not lucky to be in the position that you are. You deserve to be there because you've worked for it and you're great at your job. There's so many people who, you know, we think, ah, oh, they must be so amazing at their job. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a Stanford CS major. They're probably amazing. And then you work with them and they're like, oh wow, they're just, you know, like everybody else. Um, and so learning to have that confidence in yourself, learning that you do deserve to be here, you're not some, someone that just got in by chance, you're not an imposter, but you do, and you are somebody who should be at these companies, and you can even think outside of that, you can even go further, you can become VPs, you can become CEOs, you can become angel investors, you can become venture capitalists, right? That to me is the goal, is to really kind of inspire people to say, you know what, what do I wanna be, and why do I think I can't get there? Why do I think I don't deserve to be there? And kind of seeing that that's really all a mirage, that's all a lie, it's all things we tell ourselves because we're afraid of putting ourselves there, but I think that once you push through that, you can find that, you can actually go a lot further than you, than you believe you can. As I look ahead in my life, my goals are really all come down to financial freedom. Being able to live my life on my own terms without needing to get approval from anyone or needing to be or do anything in particular. How I get there is less important than the things I learn on the journey itself. I love the aspect of building, like creating value and adding value to the world. And so, you know, as I've gone through the last three years, even though I have a full-time job, I've continuously built new and new things. And I just love that aspect. It makes me, it fills me with joy, right? But the number one priority for me is just having that financial freedom. And whether that's done through working a full-time job or going the entrepreneurship route down the line, you know, that's to be seen. But I think just having the ability to live life on my terms is probably the thing that drives me to wake up every day and continue to work and continue to, you know, build things and continue to add value to the world. And you can't basically say, I'm gonna put off happiness, I'm gonna put off joy until I've gotten to whatever goal because you, we don't know when you're gonna get to that goal or if you're gonna be around to get to that goal. So for me, finding space and time to enjoy my life as I'm working and, and building things is critical for me. Oh, 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 oh,